All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, talking about the Tour of Italy, the Giro. We're wrapping up uh, week two, and uh, we, we I've been I've been absent a little bit, but you guys have been covering it. I know and we got Mister Hincapi in the house who just got Hello. back. When, George, when did you just, you just got back from Australia? Yeah, one in the morning last night. Oh my God, we were, we were we just missed each other. Isn't that weird? I know. Uh, uh, over there in Madrid again, the pack drop is just Johan. You are man. This is amazing, <laughs> Johan yeah. Bernil. And look, I've always known that I was a saint. Look at this. I have just. <laughs> well, the, you know, there are a lot of people in cycling that would beg to differ, but um, which means, it, if you don't know, know what that means, it, it, they would disagree with that. Yeah, yeah, no, but I, but I it, it's a good, it's a good look. <laughs> uh, uh, and over there in Austin, I saw I saw a special special um, uh, JB Hager with a special award or special special recognition yesterday. Uh, from the city of Austin. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> that, that was pretty random. That Nine was years a, after being on the radio. You and Sandy look like an old married couple there. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of are. Yeah, uh, we yeah. spent a lot of, was, a lot of years like, together. I was like, yes, it's probably better they separate them after 30 years together. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that was fun. But hey, I, I got to mention, I didn't know if you were going to show up today, Lance. You've been kind of off doing crazy things. Oh man. I didn't I mean, know when you were back, when you'd be back with this. Yeah. What's going on? Well, and, and it's not a secret anymore. I, I posted it up on Insta and, and they're starting to run ads. Fox is, is already starting to run ads for it. Uh, I was watching the show the other night and it came up. It's funny thing. I was watching a show with the kids and, and the commercial came on for this new reality show called stars on Mars. So it was, um, they basically took 12 of us, everybody from myself, Marshawn Lynch, Ronda Rousey, Natasha Legero, Adam Rapon, um, et cetera, et cetera. And they put us in basically a Mars simulation in the outback of Australia. Now I was in this, it was, it's filmed in this place called Cooper PD. Um, I don't recommend that anybody go to Cooper <laughs> PD and, and I, 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 you know, I was in the habitat for two weeks. So you all know, especially this crew right here. And, and the listener knows, because I say it all the time. I don't like people. <laughs> all right. And I, and, 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 and I'm not trying to sound like some sort of grump, um, but I just don't, you know, I, I like, I love who I love and, and I'm good with that. And I'm going to stick with that. So George, George is just, just can't wait to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot to say about that, but I'm going to let you finish. So imagine throwing me in a habitat and I mean, fairly small. Um, very confined, uh, shared sleeping spaces, shared bathrooms, shared kitchens, oh. everything shared uh, with 12 strangers. And um, it was interesting. <laughs> it was very interesting. I, I, I think I'll look back on it and, and have some fond memories. It, it, it was, it was, it's hard. And, and you realize, I mean, it is a reality show. So that whole dynamic of a reality show plays out. There were 60 cameras constantly mic'd up. So they are capturing everything. And then we would go out and do missions. I won't tell everybody what happened on the show. You'll have to watch to find out the first episode, by the way, on Fox is June 5th. Um, but it, 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 it was, uh, boy, it was, it was, it was a grind. <laughs> I was, I was happy to get home and, and see the family. And, um, well, a lot of people asked me about it. Of course, I didn't know much, you know, at all, but, I, I, I was like, you know, he'll be good at playing the game of reality TV. But what a lot of people probably don't know about you, Lance, is that you're very meticulous with your space mm. around you. Yeah. Very, very tidy and organized. Yeah. And well, I wouldn't, I, say, I, I wouldn't say OCD. You're not that, uh, that far. I, I, but I, I would. But it, would you? Okay. <laughs> and then so um, go, living with other people's stuff, I can't picture you doing that. Yeah. That's all on the show. The only <laughs> okay. place that wasn't... Um, and I know we're getting off subject here, but I'll, we'll wrap up. But the only place that was off limits was where the bathrooms <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons, but everything else. And I will say they had a gym in there, which was cool. And I mean, I think it'll look amazing on TV. Um, but it, the, the, the reality is, and I, of course, before I went, I started reading all these articles at some point in time, we, whether it's us, the Americans or whoever is going, or the Chinese or whoever is going to send people to Mars. Right. And it's going to require seven months and, and, a, and a spaceship to get there. And then a year uh, there. And then, you know, I guess however long to get back in, in, in a much smaller space. And so it, I, just being there two weeks, and this was 
you know, this was a glorified um, version of a habitat, but boy, it, it's hard. I'm telling you, it's, it's very, very hard. And um, I'm glad to be home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyways june 5th on fox prime time check it out i was trying to i will say i, I did uh fart a couple of times which was a big hit on the show should we have a, a, a show a, a wrap-up show on on the actual show on june 6th see what your uh, teammates think about it well it's 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 there's 12 episodes right so oh. we're gonna we're gonna be we, we will have to be sort of uh playing along with this during during our big show during the move uh during, we can do you know, while, our own while, our own recaps yeah i mean I, I fear i fear that every monday it's there on monday nights i fear that every of course that's a rest day i fear that every monday we're gonna have to do you know we're gonna be talking about the tour uh, but i'm also gonna have to be talking about what happened that week on stars on mars um, and it's, uh, I will, I will say it was not, uh, we didn't all sit around and sing Kumbaya. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> y'all, y'all know me. Um, let's talk about the Giro before we do today's show brought to you by element. We talk about it all the time. And finally, finally, I'm looking outside. The sun is out. The warm tips are arriving here in Aspen. It is time to go outside kids, be an outdoor kitty and get your sweat on. I sweat my ass off. We all know that. I tell you all the time. Element is our go-to uh, hydration source and resource. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. No sugar, no gluten, no artificial ingredients, no BS. It is the real deal. And best of all, if you don't like it, just give it to a friend. An Element will refund you. So they got a free gift with the purchase. Uh, all you got to do is head on over to drinklmnt.com slash the move. And those are the letters, drinklmnt.com slash the move. You get a free sample pack, so you can try out all the flavors, citrus, raspberry, orange, and unflavored. Dial on the one you like. Get your free gift over there. That's drinklmnt.com slash the move. Today also brought to you by Ventum. I've got a little update here. I, I, uh, George, I'm glad you noticed this morning on my Strava or whatever, or maybe on Instagram, I went out for a road ride on my new NS1. Of course, we we broke ground on those babies uh, uh, in Tuscany when we were there right before I went to Mars. Um, it, it, the thing's a rocket ship. We talk about it all the time. This brand is crushing it. They've got amazing customer support. Dia and his whole crew, they've, they've just built, they've just built a couple of badass bikes, the NS1, the GS1, of course, the gravel bike, but I got a little bone to pick. All right. I, I've been noticing on the gram and I'm riding a stock one right now, but George, am I seeing that you have a custom NS1 to did, that, did I see that? I was, right? I was, I was waiting. Was, for was, was, that. was that photoshopped? It was not a photo shoot. It's a custom matte black with Columbia flags S1. Also says a GH1 on, or sorry NS1, but it says GH1 on there as well. Really, um, super cool design, and we will be providing that to our guests that come to the Myrica camp uh, in September. They'll be able, all be able to get custom NS1s fitted on the bikes and uh, be able to ride them in Myrica with us and take them home as their own. Right. So that is a little update. As as y'all know, we did. The, the the Mallorca, what's called a fantasy camp last September. We're going to do it again this September. The dates are September 25th to 30th. It's myself, George, Johan, uh, Big Jan, Ulrich, Mari Holden, and the entire We Do Travel team. Uh, check this out. We're staying at, and we stayed there a couple of years ago, uh, at an amazing property in Dea called La Residencia. You guys look it up. I mean, this thing is I, I roll. I remember when I rolled up there, I was like, and I'm a snob. Like I, I, I like I see it. <laughs> I rolled up. I said, holy shit. I may not leave. Like this is, is, I mean, it was y'all, y'all know, man. I mean, the, the room, the, the grounds, the property, the food, the wine, it was just amazing. Anyways, uh, four days of professionally guided rides, daily post ride massages, custom, we do cycling kit, all the food and beverages, we got the mechanics, we got laundry, we got all the stuff you're going to need. Follow car. Johan will be there as the director sportive. And as George said, you get your very own custom. I guess I, I guess I have to go. I, I see what's happening here. Okay. Okay. I, I have to go to get my custom <laughs> Ventum NS1. That's the deal. Correct. You got to go. <laughs> this is something. Uh, for right now, though, special offer for our listeners, head on over to VentumRacing.com slash The Move. That gets you 10% off. Again, that's VentumRacing.com slash The Move. All right. The Tour of Italy. Boy, I, I, we were chatting in our pre-show with the members. 
our uh, members meeting, as we call it. Uh, and I told the guys, this, to me, it feels like the, 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 really the first two weeks is all about the three C's, right? You've got COVID that reared its head again. You've got the crashes taken out, namely Teo Gagenhart. Uh, and then you have the cold. I mean, these conditions, but to, I, I don't think anybody ever likes racing. You just watch and you just have to kind of have one hand over one eye and just like, this is so brutal. I mean, the, and by the way, this is, and if for y'all that follow the sports, I mean, it, the weather has been so bad in Italy that they had to cancel the formula one race in, in Italy. That shows you how bad the rain has been. The flooding has been, I mean, F1 just straight up said, we can't send first responders to an F1 race because we need all hands on deck. We need everybody here to, to deal with this disaster, natural disaster. And meanwhile, these guys, of course, not riding through, you know, flooded streets, but the weather's just been atrocious. Yeah. These guys have looked, they've been in a hurt locker the last week, every day we turn it on, it's pouring rain. I've seen some guys, Johan, correct me if I'm wrong, having two, three rain jackets on. They'll take one jacket, one rain jacket on. They have another two underneath it. I mean, that is as extreme as it gets. And like you said, Lance, they canceled the Formula One, which shows you the extremity of the weather. And these guys are still out there riding uh, five, six hours a day on the bike. Yeah, lots of stress. You know, when it's when it's raining like this all day, uh, there's still a bike race going on. The the top guys and their teams have to stay in front, so it's super nervous. Um, super cold, very uncomfortable with all those clothing on. And, and, and also, uh, a lot of guys, a lot more guys get sick, not just mm, because of, of the cold, but because of all the rain and everything that comes up and everything you, t- you, you, you take in. Um, we've seen so many, uh, illness, not just COVID also a lot of stomach problems and, and guys who just got sick. So, right. Um, it's been really, really hard in the, in the first two weeks on the guys. Just to give you a, a, a sense for a perspective here, um, and we haven't even gotten, we're of course going to talk about this final week that everybody is talking about just how hard it is. Um, there's only 132 riders left. I mean, that that's very, very rare in this day and age in cycling. Um, and that's before the last week. I mean, that that number could, we could see something in the one teens. Yeah, as <laughs> I, I pointed out to Johan, I, on the last show, I've never seen in a race so many riders just trying to get feeling in their hands. Uh-huh. If you think about the cold and crashes when you can't feel the levers, you probably can't feel the brakes. It's just a recipe for disaster. It, it, it's a guessing game and it's kind of a time release, right? You sort of you're, and I have really bad hands, really bad circulation in my hands and feet. So it's, it's one of these things where you kind of have to just look ahead and you're like, I th- think I'm going to have to break in about two seconds. So let me go ahead and have my brain, tell my hands to start your hands are just blocks and you can't, you know, this isn't like skiing where you're wearing these big gloves or even heated gloves. You still have to have a fairly thin glove and you can put on three or four raincoats of course, and, and put on shoe covers. But at the end of the day, you still have to be able to use your hands. So the gloves are thin and it's, it is, it's absolute torture. Not, it, to, it, not, it, not, not mentioned just breaking, but also shifting gears. Sometimes your right. hands are that cold. Right. You got to find uh, unique ways to actually change into a gear that you want to change into because your fingers aren't working the way they should be. And also, also, you know, with all those clothes on being cold, you can't eat normally like right. you would. You would normally, you know, feed yourself during a stage. So they they arrive. They're they're more empty, and it's day after day after day. And I think that explains a lot. Um, I mean, I've seen some some comments of cycling commenters and, and journalists that say, ah, you know, this is boring. There's no action going on. Uh, listen, I mean, these guys are warriors. You know, I, I completely uh, understand why we don't see um, this action what everybody expects. And plus, you know, the last the, this year is designed as usual, that the last week is is always the hardest week. Um, so I, I understand that, uh, everybody wants to save themselves. There's different things going on. You know, there's, there's guys riding for GC with their teams. There is also, there are also guys in the race that their goal is to finish the Mm. Giro. You know, there's riders, young riders in there. They do their first grand tour. They want to finish. So they're not going to go in breakaways knowing that a, they can't win the stage. They're going to get dropped and they're still too inexperienced. So, I think all these things have to be taken into account and, and, you know, the critic, the criticism of, you know, this is a boring Giro uh, for the moment, we haven't seen a lot uh, of movement in the GC, but I have seen a lot of interesting stages for the stage wins. Right. Absolutely. I mean, just when, when those breakaways are the other day, for instance, um, 
I forgot there was the two guys, the Israeli Cycling Academy and the bike exchange. They made they were, I think they had 40 seconds with 1500 meters to go or 2K to go, and they still got caught. And mm-hmm. it's not like they completely slowed down, but the tactics came into play. They started maybe watching each other a little bit much. They got caught right at the line. The breakaway is just the other day when Dines won. They also got caught right before the line. You don't, it's very rare in cycling to see um the riders get caught so close to the line and the, the people from behind winning like that. It's kind of it's actually very exciting to watch. And and, be- and 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 we've yet to mention, you know, the 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 withdrawal um of Rimco of Enipool, which I think, and obviously, you know, he was he he tested positive for COVID. It's crazy to me that now I guess the protocol is you know, you can still race if you have COVID. Like if you want to press on, go ahead. I'm like, wait, what just happened? Like is uh, okay, whatever. But he, he, nonetheless, he pulled out. I think that just kind of, it, it just, everybody just tweaked out a little bit. Like, I mean, he was such a clear favorite. He's, he had the team. He he looked great, you know, obviously opening, uh, amazing opening time trial. And people looked around and were like, oh shit, I guess this thing's wide open now. And that's what we've seen, mm-hmm. but they're still trying to, you know, recalibrate from that, but also save up for this this last week that everybody uh, says is just totally hellacious. I, I personally looked at it and thought, man, Johan read off the, 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 the stats on just how much climbing there is per day. Of course, the final time trial on, on the day before the finish is diabolical, but we'll see. I mean, it's up, it's like anything, any bike race, it's up to the actors in the but play to, to animate like, it. Okay. Well, Remco, Remco uh, pulls out the day after four of his teammates pull out. So that's basically one team gone plus one of the big, the, the big favorite. Then a few days later, we have this unfortunate crash. Theo Gegenhardt, who, in my opinion, was in the shape of his life. Mm-hmm. You know, he was amazingly strong. Uh, he has to abandon with a broken pelvis. You know, he's in the meantime, he has been having surgery and apparently everything's going well. But, you know, that obviously changes the whole dynamics. You know, if, if you look at Ineos, uh, they have Geraint Thomas and Theo. That would have been a totally different game if both of them are still up there. You know, they would have been able to play more tactically. Now they have to focus on Geraint Thomas. And I think, you know, it's a great leader. He has a, a big chance of winning, but uh, it changes it changes the whole the whole strategy of Ineos. And um, no, right now, no, I think... Yeah. Not only that, Johan, but they were... Uh, Teo and uh, Garen Thomas were the, really the only ones that were able to respond to one sort of selected day when Roglic uh, dropped Remco by a little bit. They were the only two that re- were able to go with them with him. So mm-hmm. you're right. That combination uh, could have caused a lot of damage in this final week. And it's unfortunate to see Teo go out like that. I know he was, it was a major goal of his. He'd been riding super well leading up to the zero and put the whole year on that. So it's a shame to see him just slide out in a corner and be taken out for the rest of the year. Yeah, imagine, for example, if you still have Theo in the race together with Geraint Thomas, they obviously stay up there uh, as being the leaders. But uh, Ineos could have played with a guy like Taimen Arendsman, who is still top 10. I think he's seven or eight. I don't know. I don't, but, you know, they would be able to play with him nine, strategically. Nine and he place. would be able to be in those in those big groups. It would have been totally different, you know. So now Taimen Arendsman is, even when he's in top 10, but he has to do the the duty of pulling on the last climb and has no, absolutely no movement to, uh, to, you know, to go in breakaways. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's hmm. jump into stage 13 before we get, uh, break down what, what happened and what was going on, especially what was Thibaut Pino saying. Uh, it was a shortened stage, which is interesting because we, I mean, as one of the things I've learned uh, from you guys is some of these riders, they mark a stage you know, once it's announced and they set their sights on a stage win there. And all of a sudden you get blindsided by a stage reduced to what? 75 K or yeah, something like 80K, that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, what are your, what is it? What's that like for a rider when that you get thrown that curveball? And especially, you know, it's been announced in the morning, you know, like in the morning they, they decide, okay, we're not going to go over this, um, uh, Grand San Bernardo, I think it was. It was supposed to be the the highest point of the Giro, two thousand four hundred meters. At first, they said we're going to go until eighteen hundred meters. Then finally, they cut it out. Not just that, but I think the whole logistics of the team. You know, you basically you st- you wake up in the morning. Normally, you have breakfast um, two and a half, three hours before the start, I guess. 
uh, if that's still the same rule, because I don't know if that's still working. But, uh, you know, now they have to be basically two and a half to three hours in a bus, go over that pass, mm. then go down and then basically have a start at uh, 80K before the, before the finish. And it starts straight up with the hardest climb of the day. Super hard climb was basically was Verbier, going up Verbier and then five kilometers higher than Verbier. Um, so that changes everything. Um, that day was, um, I, I think it was a super hard day. Um, really, really exciting for the stage win, but nothing happened for GC because on the last climb, Kranz Montana, uh, which is, uh, by the way, you won a time trial. Yeah, uh, I was going to, I, I, when I saw that, I, I thought, you know, I think I've raced up here. You know, y'all know, I mean, <laughs> I, I rarely, you know, outside of Vontu and Alpe d'Huez, I, I don't remember these places. But I remember, I you know, I remember. I maybe I remember Kranz Montana because it's sort of this swanky place. You got the time trial. You're going by look course. Like, geez, that's a nice golf course. You don't see those in Europe. And then I get to the hotel. I'm like, God dang, this this is. I can get used to this. But yeah, there was tour of Switzerland. There was a uh, individual time trial up that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I did remember that. But it's. But I also remember it's just not. It's not know, very very hard. It's, it's, it's not very steep. And in this yeah. day and age in cycling. So many guys are so good. It has to be really steep. I mean, mm-hmm. look, all of us, if we went and rode it, we'd be like, all right, that that's steep enough. We're good. <laughs> For these guys, it's not. I mean, it, it. we saw it in the tour last summer when they throw in some of these 12, 13 percenters. That will separate the field. Yeah. Gran Smetana is not going to do that. And, and then you throw it. It was a headwind as well. So Also headwind. Helps. Yeah, I that's, that's a huge problem. But going back to the weather, I don't think there was one rider in the peloton that was saying, darn it, we're not doing this <laughs> first climb and descent. I think every all of the riders were extremely happy about that. Perhaps the staff adds a whole nother layer of complexity, moving the cars around, keeping the bus at the start as long as possible. I think they actually started, got back in the cars, and then drove the rest of it. Oh, I the, didn't know that. I didn't. Yeah, they, 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 they did the start. And rode a couple of kilometers, oh, pouring rain, geez. three or four jackets on. Yeah, this oh, is that just, was, was that just, just to honor the, the start place? Yeah, just, no, that's just not. To, honor the start that, place. that is not to honor the start place. Incorrect. <laughs> that is so that the Tour of Italy's organizing committee can exactly. get the get can paper. get the get that paper well, from I mean, that the town or yeah. village or city or whatever that paid to have the Tour of Italy there. But that that's come on. That, that, I I that, now I, that I, is silly. I'm correct. The Giro d'Italia wanted to honor the start place, not the riders, but. They use the right. riders to honor their obligation towards uh, the, the 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 start city, but that I mean that sucks. I mean you have to get wet, then get back in the bus. Uh. That's <laughs> I mean I remember uh, one. I mean in in I mean a very long time ago I had one experience like this in the tour of the tour that Bjarne Reese won, the first tour that uh, Miguel yeah, and Brian didn't. I was there too. Oh, you were there. So we yeah. we did we did that. I mean we did like three hours over the Col de Isaran. Yeah. And the Galibier uh, in the cars, not in the buses, because the buses were not allowed to pass. And then so we were driving, you know, three three riders per car, and then basically got down, started in uh, Briançon, and it was a 45 kilometer race, straight up, a uh, cat one climb, Mont Montgenevre, and then finish on on Sestriere. So it's a that's a bit similar. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean that must be really really hard. Also mentally to gain, basically you know shift your 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 mind, you know, um, and and for sure the the riders uh, know already on beforehand that the last climb was headwind because the staff is there, so they knew perfectly well that if they would if they would attack on the first climb that they would encounter mm. a, a very hard headwind on the last climb. Well, let's talk about Pino and, and his his race because it's you know uh, he was obviously looked like the strongest you know one of the stage when is. Uh, if you believe what you read, which I think we do, this is his last year. What a way to, you know, win a stage in the tour of Italy in your final year, uh, after a long career, a great career. Um, you know, uh, I'm watching the stage going and, and having, of course, having done Kranz Fontana, knowing it's just not, it, it, it's hard to get away. It, there's no, you know, there's no moment there where if, even if you're the strongest, you can actually get away and keep going. But he just kept attacking and attacking, and then they would. These guys were smart. I mean, they even the kid, the movie star kid who won. At one point, he was off the back. He just stayed a a constant tempo and just kept everybody right there. Um, and then the F rider doing the same. But I'm watching this going. Who is taught? Like, if you're the director in the car, going, you know what? 
let's not do 10 attacks to try to get away. How about we wait, wait, wait. And they know the roads. They know when it goes from 6% to 7%. Let's do maybe two or three. And if it doesn't work, then get ready for the sprint. Mm -hmm. But how many matches did he burn just trying to get away? And the time time gap was not a factor. They had plenty of time. Right. And especially those two, those two solid Americans. I mean, they they, uphill, those guys are not panakukan, you know, (laughs) that they are, they're great climbers. Uh, you know, Rubio won won a stage in the early one of the early races. I think in in the, in Abu Dhabi actually in uh, in, in, the, in this lo- in the longest climb, he was ahead of uh, of Adam Yates and Evenepoel, um, coming from coming from the peloton, not from a breakaway. Uh, so you know, he's he's obviously has talent. The other guy has won races already also, and you know, uh, it's not like Pinot. You know, he is obviously a good climber, but he's not mm. going to just ride away from him, from them. So he, I mean, he attacked from the bottom, and there you could see, okay, this is going to go completely wrong because he attacked, got caught back, then attacked again. I mean, after three, four attacks, yeah. What what do you expect? The guys are not just going to work hard to come back and then start to collaborate with you. You know, right. and you t- and guys tend to show their best effort very early on, so that you, the other two could could monitor that and be like, okay, well that. Let's just uh, assume that was his best attack. And and this is what it took me to get back. You can just kind of play the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think looking back, you know, must regret, regret attacking at the bottom of that climb and attacking as many times as he did because he was so strong and clearly had the legs that had to use a bit more, uh, more sense on that last climb. He could have really saved it for one or two really hard attacks. And most likely, I think he was the strongest guy in that, in that breakaway. He could have won. He would have won in the sprint also, George. If he does yeah. two or three attacks and says he, you know, he can't get rid of them, he would have won in the sprint. Yeah. But Agreed. all of a sudden he ran out of legs. I mean, he's he was he just didn't have didn't have it anymore. Yeah. Johan, does he do the tour, Thibaut Pino? I don't think so. No, the the Groupama FDG is focusing on uh David Godu. They're they want to be on the podium. He was fifth last year, and I think Damar is also going as a sprinter. So Pinot is uh, not doing the Tour de France. Uh, well, yeah. Hmm. That which, was a big miss then. Which put more uh, at stake with that potential stage win for his yeah, for final sure. season. Yeah. Yeah. It's not over yet. I still expect him to go in one of those stages. And I think he still will try to win. A st- he has a good chance of winning a stage because he's obviously he's in good shape and he is not. I mean, he is close in GC, but they all know that he's not a real threat to win the Giro. Um, so I think he still has a chance to win a stage. Well, and, and I, and I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm going to, you know, I, the cat weasel Vauders, uh, was throwing him some shade on, on Twitter. Uh, yeah. The other day, I don't remember when, I don't know what kind of, I don't know, you know, I don't know what kind of guy he is if that, but that was some, that was some pretty serious shade. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's hope he's one of these dudes that says, all right, well, this last week's hard. I'm a climber. It's my final year in, in the Peloton. Watch this. Let's, what was well, the shade? You know, I didn't catch that. Was it for the mistakes he made? How no. emotional he is? No, I just was said he was a, you know, he was a whiny, you know, cry baby that comes across the line crying, doesn't even congratulate the other riders and didn't name He's, him. But then, but then you're getting, you know, hats off to Pino. He, he, he responded like, who are you? <laughs> which, <laughs> which is, and then of course I just, y'all know me. I just was, couldn't help. I couldn't help myself. It was basically congratulating, uh, Ben Healy. I mean, what a guy, what a writer, you know, yeah, we, we, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, he lost, he lost to Brandon McNulty and he went to congratulate him. And, uh, so voters made the comparison to Pinot when he, um, when he had this uh, issue with Cepeda and and said that instead of, you know, going to him, he just was whining in the media. I mean, there's, there's, some, uh, there's, there's a somebody who's a whiner. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> These things are always more nuanced, right? You don't know how McNulty and, and, and Healy are. They, they could be, they could train together with, you know, in Girona where a lot of these guys live there. They could chat a lot in the Peloton during the races. You know, you could tell that Pino was, he didn't want to have any, any post-race coffees with these guys. He was pissed during. Well, and and we stage. shouldn't be surprised that Pino is emotional like that. That's we've seen. This is nothing yeah. new. That's He's just highly, work. highly yeah. emotional. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> wired differently. <clears throat> and then before we get into the final week, let's just touch on Brandon McNulty. Cause this kid is, he's a beast. Uh, I was so glad to see him win a stage. Mm-hmm. Of course, an American, always nice to see an American win a stage in the, any grand tour, but uh, he, and I know you have some thoughts on his tactics. I 
I said in the pre-show, I was like, well, with the, the tactics that won the stage. Yeah. 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 Um, but I, I love the way this kid rides. He's, he's a team guy. He's strong as hell. Clearly must train like a fiend. Um, he's a serious looks, dude. He looks incredibly, incredibly stylish on a bike. I mean, yep. super, super good position. Uh, you know, he's very, very strong. I, I personally think that, you know, he can get a lot more out of his career than uh, this is his sixth victory as a professional first uh, Grand Tour stage. You know, let's not forget, Lance, this is the same guy in the Olympic Games who did this move with Carapaz and it took a pull right. and then got dropped, right? So, yeah. I, you know, well, I had... That's because that's he was working for Pogachar. But I was, if you remember, <laughs> I was critical of his tactics on the second last climb because we all know that Ben Healy, uh, by the way, I, I've already said it in another show, but I'm going to say it here again. I have to take back my words uh, about Ben Healy. I said before the Giro, big mistake. To right, you ben did. Healy. Exactly. I did say that. And I said on, on, on one show, I'm, I'm swallowing my words uh, because I was completely wrong. So, um, not afraid to say that I was completely wrong. This guy is amazing. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's good to you, Jan. This is, a, this is, it's, this is a good side. And you're coming on. Right? To refresh, let me refresh everyone's memory. If you didn't hear those shows, Healy made a name for himself in, in the spring season with some results. He was everywhere. So they throw him into the Giro and then Johan's like, you're taking this fresh kid who's getting some, some action and just throwing him at everything is what it appeared like. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And he thought that was a mistake and he's yeah, right. Well, well, it's obviously not a mistake because he, uh, he won a stage. He almost won another one and the Giro's not finished yet. I mean, the guy right. is on amazing shape and in the stage yesterday, um, Healy was in the breakaway. So was McNulty. I mean, in, I think in McNulty's case, you should focus on Healy and, and try to follow him. Uh, he did, he did that, but he also tried to drop him, um, on the second last climb. And then he got dropped from Healy. Luckily, he, he could come back. And then he did play it cool. And Healy made a mistake in the final. And, and McNulty won that stage deservedly. But but he made the mistake on the second last climb. And uh, I mean, it shows also how strong he is because strong riders can correct their mistakes. You know, they can they can make they can recover from it and they can still win. But he might have also, Johan, uh, sort of back in uh, McNulty's attack on that second last climb is. I'm sure he was thinking and his directors were telling him how good Healy or they all know how good Healy is in those short, steep climbs. I mean, he was arguably the second best guy in the classic Sam Solias. Mm -hmm. And to finish the Bergamo, Lance and I have done that ride from Como. I don't know if you remember. We rode on no, that same exact finish long time, long time ago. It's short and steep, very similar to the classics. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that McNulty just didn't want to get to that climb with him, knowing how good he had ridden up until then uh, with, during the classics. Uh Ended up winning the race, so it, it makes no sense stake. because there End was the 30 day. kilometers from the from the top of the second last climb to the to the last climb. Makes no sense. Well, that's what these guys. That's how Healy won the stage. The other stage, he went yeah. away with 40k to go. Yeah, but he, once he, you get over the once you get over these these uh, climbs and you know the route, it's all downhill, windy. Arguably, you can go faster than with four or five, six guys, which mm -hmm. we're starting to see a lot more of these days. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, he won the stage. Can we just yep. yeah, can we just <laughs> let the let the kid you know he did win of, the stage and and it was, it was congratulate a, him and be like yeah don't worry. nobody no, I mean, listen it, it's it's like golf like you sometimes you skank a shot and it goes in the hole <laughs> right there's no fucking video on the scorecard right I mean the, the kid won the stage congratulations absolutely absolutely yeah yeah so guys I got to bounce real quick I got I screwed up my schedule I got to get my kids but I did want to shout out to. And say congratulations to Mark Cavendish, who just announced his yes. retirement and today in the rest day. What an amazing career. What an amazing ride he's already having at the Giro. I think he could have already won a stage had he not had a, a little bit of bad luck sliding out. But we haven't seen the last of him. I truly think he's going to break that record coming up here in July. And just wanted to say all the best to, to Mark and his family. And yeah. um, can't wait to hang with him in his mm. post uh, second career. While you're broing down with him, get him to come to the Mallorca camp. He was a big hit. I will ask him. He was. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. Right, I'll see yep. you next one. Bye. Um, let's let's jump into the final week. But before we do, yep. today's show also brought to you by Athletic Greens. We talked earlier in the show about my experience on Mars or whatever <laughs> was supposed to be. It felt like, by, by the way, it felt like Mars for what it's worth. <laughs> like when you watch this shit, just know, I know it was a show and the, 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 I felt like I was on, on, on Mars. 
I, I mean, <laughs> anyways, I'm talking about athletic greens. It's, it's the great thing about athletic greens. Not only has it changed my daily routine and I really think my health and how I've taken control of my health, you can travel with it. I had athletic greens every day in this simulated habit to Mars habitat. Uh, it really is. It's amazing. Um, 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens kickstart your day all for less than three bucks a day. It, it's a game changer. I had the travel packs over there at home. I have, you know, I have the big bag that I keep in the fridge. Um, but it really is all about reclaiming your health. Let's make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash the move. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash the move. And speaking of vitamin D, my, my vitamin D is always kind of low, but damn, must be woefully low after being inside for two weeks. You imagine putting me inside <laughs> for two weeks? No. I mean, it's a miracle anybody came out alive. <laughs> I think Marshawn Lynch was one of them. So he, he could fend, and Ronda Rousey, they, they sort of fended for themselves. Um, today, today also brought to you by HVMN. We often hear that fasting and exercise are good for the brain. So HVMN has launched the world's first drinkable ketone. They launched it in 2017. Ketone IQ is their latest innovation on ketones with improved effectiveness, taste, and cost Ketone IQ delivers clean fuel that can cross the blood brain barrier, supplying your brain and body sustained energy, mental focus and sharpness, putting you in flow, lasting for hours. Head on over to HVMN.com. Use the promo code the move at checkout. That gets you 20% off. Again, that's H. These are letters, by the way. HVMN.com. Use the promo code the move. All right. Last before before, before, <clears throat> before we get into like the, the, the final week and what to expect, uh, something that came up uh, it w with Johan Spencer and I that I think you'll find interesting, Lunch, because you always talk about cycling being popular in different countries and it's very cyclical. You need those heroes, right? And the American win with McNulty was great, but uh, as we pointed out on a previous show, it seems like after quite a slump, German cycling is on the rise with the Ackerman win. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then, and then Nico two Dance. wins. For Nico, Nico Dance, Dance, two stage wins, two stage. I mean, incredible. Um, I think his biggest win until this Giro was uh, one stage in the Tour of Switzerland last year. Um, but the way this guy won those two stages was quite impressive. Uh, a real stage hunter. He himself doesn't really understand what's happening to him. Um, but, you know, he he won that first stage. Obviously, then he didn't have the pressure anymore. He was in that breakaway, uh, long breakaway. I think we should talk about that stage 14, you know, big breakaway, 30 riders where Ineos decided that they could do a few days without the leader's jersey. Uh, and this French rider, Bruno Armiral, got in the, got in the leader's jersey. Um, only one, he's 29 years old, only <laughs> one uh, win in his professional career. The French, he's the French national time trial champion. Uh, no other wins. So think about that, you know, being three days in pink um, for him, that's like, I mean, this, this is, this is going to make his career. For sure. Um, but there, Nico Dan's winning. And then uh, one rider, I think we should definitely talk about uh, nobody had ever, I mean, I'm not going to say heard of it, but it didn't come to attention is the Canadian rider, Derek G mm. uh, on Israel Premier Tech. I mean, this rider, um, he was three times second until now. And, and two of those, two of those uh, second places were very, very close to a win. And then on top of that, he had another fourth place uh, on Crans Montana, <laughs> uh, which, you know, I mean, <laughs> to be fourth there, you have to be, you have to be good. So uh, 25 years old, uh, he comes, he has a track background basically until, uh, last he was on the Israel, uh, development team last year. <laughs> and, um, he was doing track races until before last year. So he did, he, he didn't have a lot of road experience, uh, was put in a few times last year, uh, during the season with the big team. Um, and you know, they, they really liked him and, I mean, this guy is his first Grand Tour, uh, his first full year in the World Tour or in the big races. And I mean, what a what a Giro he's doing, you know, I and mean, to be able to do this after two weeks. Um, I mean, really, really uh, chapeau to this guy, really yeah. a discovery, a discovery, big discovery. Hmm. 
Does he keep trying? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, man. I, I think he's got to go in breakaways. Yeah, he's I mean, got to go with the break. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you know, he he was able to go with Pino and uh, with Cepeda and Rubio on 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 the on the stage fourteen, no, on stage thirteen. Sorry, uh, so he finished fourth there. So um, there's, I saw a lot of a lot of climbers getting dropped, and he stayed there. So the guy has uh, potential, you know. Um, uh, from what I hear, you know, also really really great attitude. Uh, Still has a lot to learn, even if he's 25. But, uh, you know, he came late to road cycling. And I think we're going to hear this name a lot. Um, Good. Good. Yeah. Well, we're about to find out. We're about to find out a lot of things in the final week. Yeah, I think um, so. Uh, yeah. This, uh, <clears throat> and we, as we were looking at this and talking about it in the in the members meeting, well, Johan really down to four uh, the four guys, right? So, Garen Thomas, Primus Roglic, Jalmeida. Damiano Caruso. And then, you know, I don't, I don't know much about the Norwegian kid, uh, Andreas. <laughs> I, I know, so, I know so much about him. Here's how I would pronounce his last name. Well, you just said it. So that's, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's a big talent. You know, it's been, it's been coming for a, for a long time. Uh, comes from, he was on Uno X development team. Then he <clears> went to DSM. <throat> now he is, it's been announced that he's going back to Uno X. They are building a great team uh, for the future, but he's a, he's a big talent. He won an impressive stage last last year in the Tour of Switzerland. Uh, so I don't know if he can stay up there, but he's definitely. I think he's going to try to be top ten, which would be. I mean, he's a big, he's a big guy, not a typical not your typical climber guy. Um, but I I think you're right. It's down to you know Geraint Thomas, Roglic, um, Almeida, and and Caruso. Um, well, you got, uh, let's just throw the Norwegian kid and you got five riders separated and we'll throw out the, 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 you know, friend, not trying to throw out the French guy, but let's, let's assume he gets, mm -hmm. uh, distanced. You've got five of these guys in a minute within a span of a minute, 28 with, with mm -hmm. this final week to go. Um, I don't know what the weather for, we talked a lot about the weather. I hope, certainly hope for their sake, it, it's starting to clear up. You can't imagine that an, an entire country is going to rain for three weeks, but um, <laughs> if, if it's better, you know, that's, that's better for these guys, but a minute 28, five guys with that week, the final uphill time trial, that does look hella hard. Um, Who's your favorite? Almeida. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, look, I'll, <clears throat> you ate your hat on uh, 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 EF taking Healy. And, I, you know, I've always, you know, sort of thought Garrett Thomas's best days were behind him. I'm, I've am i been very impressed that that he's ridden the Giro that he's ridden thus far. Um, mm -hmm. And what a, what a story it would be, by the way, to, to if he could hold on and win. Um, I, maybe I shouldn't pick uh, Roglic. You know, I, obviously, most people are going to pick Roglic. He's he's had some crashes. Mm. Uh, Roglic is doing the opposite of what he has been doing until now. Um, well, that's a good thing. He's, he's been, being more patient than he's ever. Been very patient. He's not been. I mean, he's not been sprinting. He's not been. His team has done no work. I mean, except keeping him in position and and bringing him you know to the right place at the right moment. Um, and I think he's gambling big on the last week. Um, you know, they all went down, you know, uh, Grant Thomas also went down a few times. I'm really impressed with Thomas also. I think personally, the way I see him riding, although it's not the same competition, but he was, let's not forget, you know, this guy was on the podium of the Tour de France last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was definitely the third best rider in, in, in the Tour de France. And I personally think that this Grant Thomas and this Giro is better than the Grant Thomas who was third in the Tour. All right. So, so are you telling us that he's your pick? Look, I mean, everything you just oh, said, let's I'm, just, I'm, let's I'm, be, I'm picking Rog. I'm picking Rog. Okay. But even with what you just said, let's be, let's be very clear. That is a hall of fame career, mm -hmm. right? And we know how this ebbs and flows and people have different views of others, you know, their current form and, and their, uh, um, you know, what their future holds or, but, but he's had a hall of fame career. So let's just give him that. He's, um, you know, he's multiple, multiple, uh, w world champion medalist. Uh, I think he's been Olympic champion on the track, uh, been first, second and third in the tour de France. You know, let's not forget. 
uh, it would obviously be amazing if he finishes uh, in, in the late days of his career, he can win the Giro. I've heard, I mean, initially before the season, he kind of let understand that it could be his last season. Now I've heard rumors that he may re-sign for two more years with Ineos. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, Geraint Thomas is going to be a tough, tough, tough rival, but I think that Roglic still has not shown his full potential in this Giro. Yeah, that's what I find interesting. Pre-show, it was about two people, Evan Apool and Roglic, and that was it. And no one else was going to touch him. Mm-hmm. And somehow we're throwing in these these few other names, uh, three other names who could potentially beat Roglic. And, and from what I'm hearing with you, like we have not seen uh, Roglic just just come uncork this thing. Well, I mean, there's been one. There's been one moment in this in this Giro where the big guys have attacked. It was Roglic who attacked. It was only Theo Gegenhardt who could bridge up to him, and then Geraint Thomas came a little bit later. Almeida, even a pool, and nobody else could follow. So right. that was. If that's an indication of where, I mean, of course, now we're ten days later, and uh, things change, obviously. Um, but I think Roglic is really uh, riding. He, for the moment, I, I think he's been riding really smart. How tough is tomorrow, Johan? It's hard. You know, Monte- I mean, what did you tell me the total vert was? Uh, 5,300 meters. <laughs> All right. We ta- uh, we ta- uh, we, that's a lot. Okay. Let's yeah. just establish that. We know that. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, just how hard it is for really anybody, but more so for some guys to come back after. I mean, rest days are always mm-hmm. weird. Right here, you have a rest day. You love a, you love kind of a break-in stage. Let's get in there and open up the legs a little bit. Boy, I would hate to have a rest day. I mean, hate. Yeah. And then yeah. all of a sudden have a day. And for those who think in feet, this is a day of 16,000 feet plus of vertical climbing after a rest day. I mean, shoot me in the face. <laughs> Uh, no way. No, Monte mm. Bondone, Monte Bondone, the last climb is hard. It's twenty. It's about twenty kilometers of climbing. Uh, but there's a steep part of up in the part of eight kilometers, uh, eight, nine, ten percent. So okay. there's plenty, plenty of uh, terrain for uh, tomorrow. It's going to be a GC battle, I think. No, no doubt about that. Whether it's for the stage victory or not, we're going to see uh, attacks. Um, and then, you know, let's not forget, we have two more uh, mountain stages after that. The hardest one is uh, stage 19 on Trecimi di Lavaredo, uh, famously known for the climb where Eddie Merckx won his first uh, Giro d'Italia in 1968. Remembers um, nobody. but <laughs> Well, I, I remember because my dad was always, always talking to me about that, that, that stage when I was little. So I, that's why I remember. Um, but 5,500 meters of climbing that oh. day. <laughs> Thanks. That's almost 17,000 feet. Yeah, And so that's stage 19. And then the day after this brutal, brutal uh, time, trial. It's, it, this is not a time trial. It's a mountain stage that, that, uh, that time trial. It's 19 kilometers of which the last nine and a half kilometers are just incredibly steep. Mm. Um, so, I mean, plenty of terrain to, uh, to see uh, a real big show and the best rider will definitely win this Giro. Yeah, good. And well, speaking of cyclical, here you have, I was just looking down the the, the GC here. Uh, of course, Damiano Caruso, who we just talked about, sitting in sixth for all intents and purposes, he's kind of sitting in fifth. One of the guys that you know might play a factor, but back to the cyclical thing, we've only got two Italians in the top 19 on mm-hmm. GC, right? Mm-hmm. That That's, that. I mean, this is, Gian, yeah. you you know how that what the Tour of Italy means to Italian teams, to Italian riders, to Italian culture. I mean, I don't remember a Giro. Well, I mean, the, the, look, the Italian, the, the, this is not their wave, right? You've got all the, somebody, somebody else is surfing the wave. And, but you'd be hard pressed to find many Giros with it going into the final week with two Italians in the top 20. That's very, very rare. Yeah. Well, there's no, there, for, for starters, lines, there's no Italian teams in the world tour. That's something that is, I mean, crazy if you think about it. You know, with that culture, with so many races, um, you could say, okay, maybe maybe UAE, you could consider that a half Italian team. Maybe Bahrain also a little bit. Um, but but yeah, I mean, it's yeah, I mean, one guy in the top twenty basically, right? So because who's the other guy? Uh, uh, Simone Velasco. Yeah. Simone Velasco. Yeah, yeah. So wow. 
I hadn't I hadn't looked at that stat, but that's crazy. This is, isn't that something? I mean, <laughs> that, that is the first. Could, could we just recognize that that's the first time that I have ever busted out a stat that Johan didn't think about. <laughs> JV, that's like you getting I a know. stat up on Johan. I mean, this just doesn't happen. This is, you know, fuck it. I'm, I'm done for the day. I had a bunch of stuff planned. I'm just going to cancel it. You know, Mic my, drop. Yeah, no, I'm good, man. I'm good. Cam, cancel the rest of my day. I'm done. Just, <laughs> I'm, it. I'm out, man. I'm going to go fucking play golf and drink cocktails. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, it's going to be exciting. I guess we'll wrap it all up when uh, next. We'll do a we'll do a midweek check in, and okay. then I'm, I might let you guys do that. We'll be back. Yeah, we'll cover that, and then we'll be back for a, a full Giro recap. Uh, uh, Sunday, he, sun, sun, next Sunday, I guess. Or, yeah, and if you don't mind, real quick, uh, I do want to draw some attention here to what we're doing, uh, helping with in Teleco Plains, Tennessee. Uh, we're uh, doing a bikes for kids there, similar to what mm. we did in Uvalde, but on a smaller scale. Uh, I think it's about 250 bikes. And after I left uh, Chattanooga, I went up to Teleco Plains with Operation Get Out just to visit with the people there. They've been there's Steve is the guy who, who's one of our listeners who rode in and liked what we did in Uvalde. They uh, we pulled in and they were building bikes. They were just outside the visitor center. And it's an interesting place. Teleco Plains, it's, it's beautiful. And it's a, it's like a it's a, a day destination. You know, people park their cars at the visitor center and get on their bikes and go ride uh, a lot of motos. So, you know, it's just that kind of terrain. Absolutely beautiful. But uh, it was dependent on a couple industries that no longer exist there. It was lumber and ironworks. And so there's no. No one spends the night. There's no hotel, you know, it doesn't have the hotels and the restaurants, but an absolutely beautiful place. And, uh, and the kids are, you know, struggling with poverty, obesity. And, um, and so Steve asked us and operation get out to get involved. If you can donate 250 bucks buys a bike and a lock for one of those kids, they've been doing it by fixing up used bikes for some time. Hmm. So this is a next level <laughs> thing for these kids of this community. So if you can donate, Go to we do dot team. You'll see a Teleco Plains bikes for kids Great. icon on the menu bar. Yeah, get them out there. It's the time of year. Keep them, keep them, keep them going in the summer too. We're approaching. Let's not forget. You know, school's almost out. But these kids, you know, summertime is the time to get out and rip around and get away from mom and dad. Fall off your new bike, scrape your knee, get back up, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Um, sounds like a lot to be uh, to be had here in the last week. So it just depends who wants it the most. We'll see you all in a week. <laughs>